This, this recording is going to demonstrate just some very simple ideas about doing some basic macro recording. Microsoft Excel has um, a kind of an interesting feature that allows you to sort of create a program simply by recording your actions on the screen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. <clears throat> so there are several ways you can get into macro recording. I'm going to go to the Developers uh, tab, which I have available. And you'll notice that in the uh, code group here, you have an option that says Record Macro. So I'm going to go ahead and click that Record Macro button. And it says, what do you want to call your macro? And I'm just going to leave it Macro 1. I don't really care what the name of it is. And it says, where do you want to store it? And I'm going to go ahead and leave it right in this workbook. Um, and I'll just put a little description here, just call it Sample, and click OK. At this point, my macro is, is actually running, and I can notice down here at the very bottom in the status bar, there's a little button. And this little button allows you to stop the recorder. Um, you'll notice up in the code group, there's a button that allows you to stop the recorder there also. So I'm just going to do a really very simple thing here. Let's just put in a label. So we'll just call this numbers. And let's go ahead and put some numbers in our column here. And let's put a formula down here to sum up those numbers. So we'll click the Home tab and click on the Auto Sum button. And it sums up our numbers. Now I'm going to do a little bit of formatting just to demonstrate what formatting looks like when we see that in our code. I'll maybe change the uh, background color of this cell to some sort of light gray. And let's make this cell bold. Let's put a border, oh, uh, let's say we put a border on top of that cell. So we'll put a top border on that cell. And let's move our cursor back up here to the top and stop our recorder. Now again, notice I don't have the developer tab available any longer because I'm on the home ribbon, but I can, uh, I mean the tab's available of course, but I can just click the stop button down here if I wish. <coughs> Now, as soon as I hit the stop button, it did indeed stop the recorder, and I say to myself, well, where's my macro? Well, let's go back to our developer ribbon and click on the Visual Basic button here. Now, we could click the Macros button. If I click the Macros button, it'll show me you know, a little dialog box showing me my available macros, and there's Macro 1, and I can run that macro if I wanted to right now. I could step into it. I could edit that macro. I can delete it, and so on. Um, what I want to do though is I actually just want to get into the Visual Basic environment and look at it. So I'll click that button for Visual Basic and notice it has automatically inserted a modules folder for me. I'll open up the modules folder. There's module 1. It automatically added that for me. And if I double click that, it opens up my macro and shows me the code. Now notice it's just a standard sub. It's got the name macro1 because that's the name we let it just uh, use the default name. Notice it did actually put my little comment in here, so the description was added as a comment. And then the macro starts. So right off the bat, you're starting to see how in Visual Basic for applications we can we can talk to the Microsoft Excel environment. So this statement that we see right here is actually fairly easy to understand. It says range B6, so it says cell B6, and then it says select that cell. And then it says take the active cell, which of course is range B6 because it was just selected, and store into that cell this string numbers. To store something in a cell, one way to do that is to say formula R1C1. That's the property of the active cell that lets us stick something there. The next thing it does then, of course, is it selects cell B7, stores the number 23, and then it just goes on down and doing exactly what I typed on the screen, storing all those values into those cells. Finally, notice this one down here is a little bit more interesting, but again, it's pretty easy to understand. It says uh, what we're going to store in the cell this time is the sum formula. Now, this particular sum formula looks a little foreign to most of you because it's using the row column notation rather than the ABC notation that's most common to people using Microsoft Excel. The notation that you see here basically equals sum, of course, is the formula, but notice what it says here. It says row, or R, and then in square brackets it says R minus 5. So that means minus 5 rows up from the current cell we're in, same column. Notice the C does not have any square brackets. There's no offset from the column. So this means 5 rows up, same column. And then the colon, of course, that's the range specifier for an Excel range. 
So it goes through one row up the same column. So this is a relative reference um, from the active cell that we're in. So we basically say sum up all those rows above us. Then we select cell B6. And notice it says selection font dot bold is equal to true. So that sets the current cell, the selection, to bold. Then it says with the selection's interior, change its shade. Now you'll notice how ugly this all looks. This is really ugly looking code. The tint and shade number here, I mean, what the heck is that all about? That just happens to be the number for that particular tint and shade. <laughs> then, of course, we select B12, set its font to bold to true, and then notice the borders piece here. It says do the XL down line style to none, the XL diagonal up to none, the XL edge left to none. This is just totally crazy. Um, borders top, it says, yeah, we want to do a top border. So it says I want a continuous border, I want the color index to be zero, tint and shade zero, and I want a thin weight on that top edge border. So this looks pretty complicated, and uh, it's actually easier to write this code sometimes than it is to uh, try to remember how to do this yourself, um, quite the way the recorder does it. The recorder actually goes a little bit over time. Uh, but you can learn a lot from this. So if you wanted to understand how to do the line styles, you know, and what the built-in constants are for the line styles, you can often just do a real quick recording and see what some of these values are. And then finally, the very last thing, if you remember what I did, is I clicked on cell B6, B6, and it recorded that and said, okay, select cell B6. So this is exactly what I did recorded by Microsoft Excel. Let's take a look at what would happen maybe if I try to run this again. So let's just click here and see if I can run my macro. So I'll click macros. I will click the run button. And it didn't put it here. It put it over here. And this has to do with the use of relative and absolute macro recording. Um, so that's something we can explore in another video. But let me go ahead and just clear all of this. And so there's nothing there. Oops, there's a border there. I wonder if we can clear everything. So we go to the home. We go to, oh, we can just, well, let's click clear here and say clear all. And so that cleared everything, formatting included. Now let's just click my mouse over here somewhere and we'll run the macro. Now, after what it just did a minute ago, you might want to guess that it's going to park all of those data values right over here where they originally were rather than where my cursor is. But let's test it out and see what happens. So I'll go to my developer button, hit the macros button, and say run macro one, and psh, there it goes. It did exactly what we thought it would do. So that's how you can record a macro. Now let me show you one other thing that's important. Whenever we're doing macros, and that means programming in Visual Basic for applications. So a macro is just another name for a program. So don't get that confused. If somebody says macro, they're really talking about some sort of program in Visual Basic for applications. So whenever you do a macro or a program in Visual Basic um, in Excel, when you save this sheet, you need to save the sheet properly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Save button here. And I'm going to call this just First Macro. Now, a very important thing when you're saving a macro, of course, is you'll you type in your name, but you'll notice that the file type is a Microsoft Excel workbook, an XLSX in this case. Well, if I just save it right now with this file type, I'm going to lose my macro because Microsoft Excel has a separate file format for saving Excel documents that contain macros. So let's pop this menu down, or up as the case may be. And you'll notice in this case, then, I've got all these different options. But the second one you see in my list here is the Excel Macro Enabled Workbook, the XLSM. So I'll choose that option. So now it's Macro Enabled. That's what we want, or we lose our macro. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this. And now it's saved. Now there's one other issue here before we run out of time. If I close this workbook and I reopen this workbook because I want to uh, maybe do something more with that. So that was called first macro. Let's go find that first macro. And there's my macro enabled workbook. It's got a slightly different icon. And I click OK or open. Immediately it's going to warn me that it's got a macro. And you need to tell it it's got a macro and you want to use that macro. So you click the enable macros button. Sometimes you'll get a prompt right up here above the, the uh, column heading and you can click that button.